John is standing there and all of creation is in front of him and they're facing the throne. And John begins to weep because there's nobody worthy. Moses is there. Paul is there. Elijah's there. Enoch is there. They're all there. But nobody's worthy. And John weeps and then an angel says to him, don't worry, <laughs> don't cry. There is one who's worthy. He is the lamb that was slain. Precious are your mercies, O God. The children of men take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They drink their fill from the abundance of your house. You give them to drink from the river of your delights. For with you is a fountain of life, and in your light we see light. I worship you, Lord. No one, no one. See, the danger with the intimacy movement is that many people have only adopted the language, but they haven't seen him. People tell you what they've read, but they can't tell you anything that they've seen. But to directly contact him is the difference between those that enter in and those that stay without. The scriptures are clear that the drinking of the river of his delights is for us. It's why the veil was torn in two, to drink continuously from the river, that great river within, even Jesus says, rivers of living water springing up to eternal life. You see, you can know all there is about H2O, every fact that there is. You can work for Dasani, and I'm telling you right now, it doesn't mean you've ever had a drink in your life. You can splash around in the river, but no amount of outward contact with the river will quench the inward thirst of the soul. Not one day, not one time. The water of life has got to come inside and be the very satisfaction of our souls. Satisfaction is not just a perk of his presence, it's the means by which he frees us and empowers us to be able to obey him. It's just not possible without that water that comes from another world. He's worthy. And why is he worthy? Because his grace has changed the face of the case upon my life. No price could erase the sin base of my humanity. I was part of the rebel family, but he handed me remedy for my corrupt condition. And this decision made me one with my help. I wasn't able to save myself. He shows me how he felt seeing me born in iniquity, sick with the infection of the age. I was born a child of rage. I was trapped in cage and a maze made in my mind. You search the world, you'll never find a way out. But a twisted crown of thorns, too small in size, was pressed into his brow, and blood flowed in his eyes, blinding him to all but the prize. This is humility personified. The blood of God, not realizing, though men love things that are deified, not a God who's crucified, but that's my God. He comes to die. Oh, precious blood of him who loved me so. His hands are nailed and his head hangs low. His body is broken, his back is lashed open. 
and the splintered cross is soaked in blood. Oh, what love, a love of me. And I see your glory when your feet are upon the sea, but never such glories when they're fastened to the tree. The breath of life breathes out his ghost, a dismayed angelic coast with a naked God upon a post. He's mostly red. Come down, they said, man's faith is dead, but God bled. God bled. God bled for sin to bring us back in. God, I thank you that there's none like you. And I ask you that even now, even here, right now, Lord, you would put the chalice of God again to the lips of men. And I pray, Lord, that you would move on our hearts to drink deep, to drink deep of the love of God, drink deep of the experience of your person. God, I look to you and I'm asking you even now that the eyes of our souls looking out would meet the eyes of heaven looking in so heaven can begin even now upon the earth. In your precious name, I look to you. You're wonderful and awesome and holy and glorious, none like you. I lift you up, O Lamb of God, precious and awesome, precious and awesome. There's no one, no one, no one, no one like you.